This, this is Wildcast. Is Wildcast. Good evening, Wildcats, and welcome to Wildcast, your source for in-depth news at the U of A. I'm your host, Lauren Stapp. Tonight, we'll recap the women's tennis and gymnastics seasons and take you to the controversial border that appeared on UA's mall last week. But first, get your rackets ready. Our reporter, Jessica Froman, takes us behind the net with Arizona's women's tennis team for a recap of their season. The girls' tennis team has had a great season so far. Their record is 15-3, and they are ranked 31 in the country. Their number one goal is to make it to regionals this year. The two leaders on the team are Natasha Marks and Kim Stubby. Natasha Marks is the team captain from England. Naturally, most people will veer towards her for advice, but she also can be a little bit quiet. I mean, she's gotten a lot better, and she's definitely, you know, developed her leadership skills, gotten more involved, uh, but sometimes, you know, she's still kind of hesitant to speak up. Kim Stubby, the Belgian native, speaks up and uh, everybody respects her because she's a really hard worker and she's a great tennis player and more importantly she's a really good person. Ultimately our goal is to be, you know, at least in the top half of the Pac-10. If you can be there, that guaranteed you'd be top 10 in the country and that's really pretty solid. That's what I love about being in Arizona is that we get the best competition. Every single time you step on the court you get to play the best. So if you want to be the best out there, you got to be the best. So. I think uh, that that's ultimately what we do. I mean, when we go play Stanford, you know, Cal, UCLA, SC, if we just kind of keep our cool, play our, our, our games, and do that to the best of our ability, we have a chance to win. Mays says the girls play best when they are smiling. We certainly need to get better and better, and, and that starts with the attitude that we bring to the court and the fact that we, we feel like we can beat anybody, and they certainly prove that at Pepperdine. Their next home match is on April 8th, at 1.30 against UCLA. For Wildcast, I am Jessica Ferrell. If the women's tennis team qualifies for the NCAA Regionals, they will play on May 13th. And all those flips and jumps are paying off for the UA women's gymnastics team. Our reporter Mike Rabin shows you the highlights from their season as the team prepares for nationals. The Arizona women's gymnastics team ended their regular season finishing fifth overall in the Pac-10 championships. The team had its ups and downs, but according to head coach Bill Ryden, there was a lot more good than bad. Well, you know, it took us a while with the incoming freshmen and with some people coming back off injury for us to actually figure out where we were strong, where we needed help. Um, I think that over the year, we've definitely gotten better as a squad. We've had sort of a little bit of a roller coaster year where we haven't put together that complete meet where every single event is performing at its best. Um, we typically had three great events and then one event we wish we had back. And it's been sort of a growing curve the entire year. Um, athletically, we have some of our athletes doing their very best uh, gymnastics of their career. There's no doubt about that. Um, it's just in our sport, you know, we compete six girls on each event. So if all six are not on top of their game, um, you're, you're definitely going to have problems. Senior captain Miranda Russell has performed great this season, but how has she handled the pressures taking on that role? Well, the pressures uh, just entail having to keep the team motivated and keep them on the right track and make sure that um, there aren't any problems going to our meet and make sure that everyone's motivated and ready to do something this weekend. Um, it's more just being a motivator at this point. Training starts in August really and then we build up all fall we train we sprint we lift we hurt ourselves really bad and then um, season is just repetition we have been doing our routines over and over again she's the perfect example of what it means to be a student athlete because she's doing by far the best gymnastics of her career she's got her career high scores on the three events that she can compete for us because her niece is still bothering her She's gotten academic honors nationally, conference-wise, and from the school. Every year she's been eligible, she's on track to possibly graduate magna cum laude. So she's been everything. She's been done an incredible job. Both Aubrey Curtello and Katie Matuzic were named first team all-conference. Hear what they say it will take for the team to succeed in the upcoming weeks. We definitely have the potential to accomplish a lot. You know, like I said, we haven't 
hit that complete meet yet. So I think if we hit that, like we just go in there and do what we do every day in here. So I think we have the potential to have a really good meet and a lot of individuals like Aubrey Costello and Molly Quirk and Deanna Graham are all all-arounders and they could even potentially make it to nationals as individual rather than with the team. If we just go out there and hit our routines like we do in the gym every single day, I mean, we'll definitely be one of the teams in nationals in a few weeks. Check out how your gym cats fared in Colorado this past weekend in one of the nation's toughest regional championships. And mark your calendars, the team is set to travel to Cleveland, Ohio for the NCAA championships on April 15th. For Wildcast, I'm Mike Raven. The Gym Cats took fifth in Denver at the 2011 NCAA Regional Championships last week. And when we return, we'll tell you about the unique change in landscaping on the UA Mall last week. Stay with us. Southern Arizona's border issues always seem to garner attention, and the UA campus is no exception with its mock fence display ch causing discussion among students. Reporter Melanie Honker tells us more. Some UA students had to change their usual route to class this past week. A chain link fence was erected on the mall to raise awareness on border issues. And what it represents is basically militarization and the futility of um, the ongoing uh, immigration issues. The club No More Deaths created the wall to symbolize the U.S.-Mexico border and Israeli occupation wall in Palestine. It spanned 1,000 feet and was covered with artwork, posters, and pictures to honor migrant deaths. Some did not agree with the message. The uh, things written on this wall, open borders, no borders, um, basically calling the Border Patrol terrorists are well outside even the mainstream Democrat Party. Organizers say awareness could be better. There's lots of animosity, lots of hate, lots of ignorance. Opposition turned destructive as parts of this 1,000-foot wall and artwork like this were torn down. I wasn't surprised because there had been lots of threats against particularly the Palestinian portion of the wall, but I was really saddened by like the level of destruction. Opposition won't stop the message from spreading. This mock border wall is, is, is coming down, but um, as long as, you know, these walls exist, people will resist. The wall was taken down after 10 days on the mall. For Wildcast, I'm Melanie Hunker. According to the Daily Wildcat, the UA Dean of Students decided to take down the mock border because it had become a safety hazard after multiple violations and threats. And that's all we have for you tonight. Remember, you can watch all these stories and more on our website at uatv.arizona.edu. From all of us here at Wildcast, have a great night, and we'll see you back here next week.